welcome back to Summit Daily's High Gear. This is Phil Lindemann, sports editor at the Summit Daily, and I'm here today in Evergreen with Kevin Clark, owner of Prouder Split Boards. And today we're going to be talking about DIY split boards. So what happens when you want to turn one of your old school, uh, you know, solids into a split board so that you don't have to spend $1,200 on a brand new model. So Kevin, thanks for joining uh, us today. Thanks, man. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things. First, what is a split board? A split board is a snowboard that's essentially cut in half either a DIY, uh, cut in half in shop, or factory that they do it in the factory. And that's why we're talking today about splitting your own snowboard. So if you've got uh, you know, an old solid board that's sitting on your, uh, your wall or just somewhere around in the garage, it doesn't have to turn into a bench. You can turn it into a split board instead of spending, you know, like we said, $1,200 upwards of $1,200, $1,500 for a split board. A little bit on the shorter side, it's a 156 centimeter. Um, so, you know, it, it borders between uh, a park and an all and a backcountry board. It's more of your all mountain board, but uh, we're gonna make it work either way, uh, just to kind of show everybody, you know, kind of what it takes. You're splitting your board, you're wanting to get into it, cost is a big issue. So if you're looking at some of these boards, a new board is gonna set you back anywhere from 500 bucks to 1200 bucks, depending on the board that you want. Take so, your time, be careful. Yeah. Remember that you got one shot at this. Yeah, you get, you do, <laughs> it's true. You got one shot with pretty much everything that you do everything on here. Everything that you're doing on this, so, you gotta get it right right away. And, and what we're gonna go through in this video is the right way to do it. Two ways that you can do a snowboard at home. So there's kind of the, uh, the basic quick way, uh, where you're just splitting the board yep. and adding the new components. And then there is the more advanced way that uh, you prefer because it leads to a stronger, safer, more stable board. Um, what are we going to be doing when it comes time to make, you know, kind of the advanced DIY split board? I like to put the edges in. There's multiple reasons. First reason is uh, safety. When you have that inner edge and you're side hilling up something and you're trying to get a plastic edge, either that's either plastic or wood, it's a little bit scary. Typically, in the middle of the board where you have that triangle configuration for your touring mount, that's the weakest point of the board. So when you put a piece of metal going down both sides, you're putting two more added strength areas to the board. Also, the way that we do it, we use a fiberglass, we use that VDS rubber, and we have our edges that we're putting in there. So you're really strengthening the board all the way from the top to the bottom and giving it better performance. Yes, it takes a little bit longer to do it, but again, we're gonna go through how to do it, how to do it quickly, and uh, get it in there so in the end, you have a good DIY split board. Yeah. So exactly. you don't have to go out and buy these, you know, hit your friends up, maybe they have this one, that one. If you're really trying to save money, you don't have to go out there and spend four hundred dollars in tools. Uh, you can make it work. What boards are best for it? Because not all boards are made right. alike when it comes to splitting. Sports. So what, what first you're going to look at is a good solid board. Uh, there's certain companies out there. I like Never Summer. I like Venture. Um, I like some of the thicker boards that are built built a little bit better. So you know the thicker, the stiffer board, um, the better. Also the longer. So you're not going to want to split that old park board that you have laying around. You're going to be in the backcountry. There's going to be powder. Um, you're going to want more skin adhesion, which happens with a longer surface on your board. So you're gonna want a longer, stronger, thicker, stiffer board uh, when you're selecting your board. A few things to stay away from, you know, the thinner boards, um, obviously anything that has a foam core mm -hmm. is, is gonna be bad when you're trying to put edges in or just put inserts in. You don't know uh, where those uh, stiff sections are in the board. Yeah. So you're gonna want to, uh, you know, make sure that it is a wood core in the board. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to find the center portion on the board itself. So you can do that two ways. The first way I like to do is by using the inserts. I've actually found that these inserts sometimes are offset. So on some of these older boards that you're using, sometimes it's off to one side a little bit more. So that's one thing to be wary about. One thing that you can do, you get your square, you can take and uh, square that up with with those inserts and when you square it up against the inserts what you can do is you can find your center line I don't like to use a marker or a pin on the board what I like to do when you find your center line is use a nice sharp knife so when you find that center line of the board 
you know, you can bring it here. You can also mark it on that ruler. And when you flip it, you can use the corresponding uh, measurement to find center on your board. You can uh, put a piece of tape down that matches the line that you've actually drilled through your board. Tape will come off when you're cutting. So what I always like to do is use that tape line as a guide for a knife. So you can bring that down, follow that tape line, get a good gouge in there. And you can do that on the top and the bottom and you have a reference line for, uh, for cutting. We drilled our holes, went through the bottom. We we're able to reference those holes, score the bottom of this, and you get this nice line going across. All right, safety goggles, ear protection. Here, we got that, uh, we got that nice center line mark that we made. We also have this board that's hitting the outermost portion on both sides. So now what we can do is we can line this up is we're going to drill in the outermost portion of that insert. We're going to take that eighth inch bit and we're going to drill center as we can. From the outermost portion of this to the center portion of our line. We're going to center that blade on five and three fourths. Make sure that thing is perfectly centered. Let's take the time. What we're doing now is we're running this through. We're going to see if that line is lining up on the top and the bottom. We're going to do it in a couple different phases. So we're not going to actually cut through the tip. What we're going to do is we're going to bring the blade. So it's kind of like right here in the middle. We'll kind of push it forward and back where we need to, but at the end of the day, um, it's best that uh, you don't cut through that tip. If this metal blade hits this metal, a lot of times what it does is it just kind of shoots it everywhere. removed material here because what we're going to do is we're going to remove this material with uh, either a handsaw or a Dremel, uh, whatever you got to work. We've separated our tips. What we'll want to do on these tips here is Remove this so the material is flat. If you don't have a sander, you can just take a piece of sandpaper and a board, just kind of rub it across there. Uh, everything's looking really good you, uh, you kind of put that board together and uh, look at it like this is a really good split I'm looking down this whole line and uh, I'm not seeing any gaps I'm not seeing any air I mean this thing literally looks like it was uh, you know it was uh, cut from a factory super super good split table saw method definitely the best way to go what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the inner edges in the split board so what we want to look for in the split board is uh, what we see is the top sheet. We have our core. We have a little uh, sheet of uh, fiberglass and then we have the bottom sheet. You guys can do it at home and we'll show you how to do it, but we're also gonna use the router setup that we have. You wanna cut into the plastic. You don't wanna go too far in the wood. What you're aiming for is to put a line all the way down on top of this fiberglass and you don't wanna go too far up. So you don't wanna start on this curve what I've found, the most successful ones are starting right where that curve is because sometimes it's kind of hard to uh, 
to get that inner edge up. And also, this is not a contact surface on your snowboard, so it really doesn't matter if you put an inner edge here. I just kind of stop where it starts to go up. What I do is it's going to get us a little bit closer, um, and uh, we'll be able to get the extra material that that first router ra uh, radius didn't get. So the second router is going to be more of a plunge router. We're going to tighten that little area up there and there. And then the second router that we're going to have is actually going to remove a small amount of plastic on this side. And that's going to be the thickness of the edge. And we'll show you that here in a minute. What we want to do is we want to set the board on here. And we want to mark here and here where that edge stops and then we'll make that same mark right there and right there what that'll do is that will allow us to uh to gauge where that next edge is going to stop and start so we've uh, routed both the radius out and uh, this groove out. And what that's gonna do is allow us to put our edge in. But if you were just to put your edge in, just like that, it's gonna stick out of your board. So what we wanna do is we wanna cut the thickness of the edge out of this portion of the plastic. I found the easiest way to do that is to take your edge, you kinda hold it up to the edge of the plastic, and then uh, you just kinda come down your board with a knife and you can just kind of score a nice line that goes down. Yeah, this takes a little bit of time, but uh, you see that nice score line? It's nice and straight. And we're gonna bring this down the whole edge of the board. We'll sit in there perfectly. So the outermost portion is flush with this outermost portion of the wood. And uh, you want to make sure that this is nice and flat when you cut this out. Um, you know, you don't want it to be too humpy because the straightness of the inner portion of your board is really going to depend on how straight this cut is here. Routed everything out. We have our edges cut out. What we're going to want to do is uh, cut our inner edges to the length that we have. going to cut that inner edge down. Also, if you uh, have the little tab that goes out, sticking out a little bit, I just like to do a nice little 45. Make sure that uh, that doesn't stick out further than the, uh, the outermost portion of the edge. Blow that out. So, we have our uh, strip of VDS rubber. It's been kind of pre-cut, but we're going to do another, uh, another cut on this here. Gonna force that in there. Take a pair of scissors, right at the end, just kind of cut that off. Make sure that's good. And we're gonna take our edge, once that VDS rubber is in, and we're gonna put our edge in. And uh, we'll take a uh, Take a razor blade, and you see that that uh, rubber's sticking up just a little bit further than the edge. When we have that edge in there, it gives us a really nice, sharp place to cut. So take a nice razor, sharp razor blade, push that piece of rubber down, and then just bring this razor across. And what we're going to do is just cut that rubber so it's nice and even with that innermost portion of your edge. Um, finished cutting our rubber. We fit our edge in there and it's looking really good. So we're going to move on to the next step which is epoxy. Uh, I like to use an old uh, water bottle. You know, usually by this step you're, uh, you're a couple beers in. So you can take that uh, aluminum can and uh, cut the top off and uh, you'll have a nice little uh, thing to put your epoxy in sure that uh, it's nice and clean for this step. 
going to do is to protect your board. We're going to get a lot of uh, epoxy that comes off the board. So what you want to do is, uh, I like the blue tape. It sticks well, but it also comes off really good. Take that tape. You're going to bring it both on the inside and the outside. The uh, edge. I'm going to take and lay it out nice and flat. And then we'll do the second one the exact same way. Got to the step where we have now uh, putting tape on both sides. We got both edges in the boards. That epoxy's kind of sitting in there. So we got to work a little bit fast so that epoxy doesn't set on us. Uh, take your clamps and uh, put those clamps on, uh, on both sides of the board. And basically what we're going to want to do is really squish that board in as much as we can. Now we're just going to leave it. We're going to hang out. We're going to drink a beer and uh, wait for this uh, glue to dry. Uh, had a couple beers, let our epoxy dry, and uh, it's nice and hard. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take off the, uh, the tape from the board. And then if you have a, uh, a heat gun or a, uh, a hair dryer, um, both will work. Basically what you want to do is just get that epoxy so it's heated up just a little bit. Um, and uh, what I like to use is a really sharp chisel. Uh, if you don't have one, you could use a knife. It might take a little bit longer. Make sure that you're not uh, coming back and uh, taking any of that wood off. So you're really kind of taking that chisel and uh, pushing it really hard against that metal edge. So you're using that metal edge to uh, kind of support that chisel. And then you're just getting all the glue and the tape off. thing on the bottom. Make sure that uh, you don't dig into that plastic base, digging that plastic base out. So uh, just heat that up. This is what we're looking at. We're seeing uh, there's still a little bit of stuff here. Uh, we can scrape that off again with a chisel. Uh, it's better to get most of it off before we go uh, to the next step, which is actually sanding the, uh, the inside edge. We, uh, we have scraped it. It's, it's pretty clean, as clean as we can get it with a uh, knife or a really sharp chisel. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sand the rest of it down and we're just gonna give it a nice sand. Typically what I find is with that board after edges are in, this is gonna be just a little bit wider than this. So what we'll do is we'll uh, first kind of sand this down and then we're gonna fit the boards together after we've sanded both boards and take off a little bit of material from these tips until they fit really good. Orbital, you can use a, uh, a sander like this. Just make sure that you're getting something that has uh, um, some pretty gritty sandpaper. Make sure it's fresh and clean, uh, that it's not already uh, gooped up like the one that you see here. Because it will get gooped up, so if you don't have an orbital sander, you can take and, uh, and clean the rest of that glue off with a, uh, a piece of sandpaper on a board. The most frustrating part of the build is once you've sanded it, 
trying to get those edges to line up. Even though we have a perfect split on the board and we've put pressure and we've brought those edges and they're perfectly aligned, sanding the material off, um, it may be bumpy here and there and there may be some gaps. So this is what we need to do. That there's a gap here, but there's no gap here. It's because a lot of times what needs to happen is more area has to be sanded off of here to remove a little bit of material so this thing goes flat together. Push, and for instance, you see right here on the board where I'm pushing, it rocks. So what you want to do is you want to figure out exactly where that board is rocking because what happens is there's just a little bit more material right here than the rest of the board. So you're going to go back and you're just going to sand just that little bit off. Time with this step, make sure that this board is going together super tight. In the end, what you're going to want to see is a board that looks like this. I mean, I can't get my fingernail down into that. That is a good tight cut. Um, you're standing on the board and what you want to do is put a small piece of tape so you're just going to outline where your foot is going. I like to do one on both sides so you can really get that angle. And just remember with the slider system you're uh, kind of fixed onto this position so just make sure that you're really comfortable riding in this position because you can't really change it up with that, uh, with that design. The tape on there and uh, we're going to go ahead and put that drill template on so we can see um, where to uh, drill for those inserts. So uh, we've laid out the feet. We are taking those clamps, bringing that board so it's tight together. Um, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, sticker that comes in the kit and it's going to say uh, which direction we need to go. So for instance it has regular front of the board. So front of the board is pointing this direction, we're going to peel the sticker off, we're going to follow the sticker indications. In this case, we're about 15 degrees, so it looks pretty close. On these four hole indications, is come through here, and uh, just give a nice punch on those center marks. That's going to help when we, uh, we put a, uh, a screw through here. Uh, what I like to do is take that small drill bit, again like we were using, that uh, 16th size, and uh, come up here and drill your holes smaller, and then work bigger. You never want to drill a big hole, it seems like it's always off, so you can make that pilot hole. Don't go all the way down. couple options you can use. The Volet kit comes with, uh, with these T-nuts. So with these T-nuts, what you would do is drill that pilot hole through the bottom and you'd go all the way through that plastic. So um, you'd have a pilot hole that you could reach from the bottom and go up from the bottom. At that point, what you would do is, first thing that you would do is you would drill out the radius of the T-nut. Big hole first because when you're drilling that out what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's the same diameter as the plugs that you're putting into the back in the base. If you go too big those plugs aren't going to sit too well so make sure that this is the correct size and drill this portion out first. Then come in and drill the wide portion to actually get the uh, the screw um, shaft through. What we're going to be doing is putting in a, uh, a top mount insert, which is a little bit cleaner. You don't actually have to drill through the bottom of the board. You don't go through the plastic, which means there's a clean, ba uh, smooth base on the bottom. You don't go through the fiberglass layer, which means it's also stronger. So what we're going to be doing to do that is we're going to be stepping that up a little bit, not worrying about drilling those bottom holes. And again, do the same thing, drill, so you feel it kind of hit the bottom. We do that on uh, our all four holes.
the tip of the board and the tail of the board, and we're going to find center on this board. So I found the best way to do that is to take your tape measure. It's going to be really easy on us today. We're hitting uh, 60 inches. So I'll take that, pull that down, and uh, we're going to hit our, uh, our mark for 30. And uh, I got this nice little punch here. I'm just going to make like a little hole. Also what works well is if you still have your knife handy at that 30, we're going to make a little mark there and we're going to make a mark on both sides. So in the middle of that board, we're going to make a mark um, that, uh, that hits middle on both sides. So they, uh, they've given us this uh, nice little template. So what you want to do is uh, take and uh, cut that guy in half on that line. Now there's a little thing that says pivot point. We're gonna make a center line that goes across that board where we marked center, and that pivot point is going to be the center portion of the board. We're gonna put a line across there so we have definite center that goes across the board, and we're going to uh, put our uh, touring bracket. Right now, what you see on their template is the holes, where they go, um, the parts that are going on top of the holes, and something that says pivot point. Um, a lot of times what they say to do is put that pivot point on center, like this. What it's going to be doing is, especially if you have an inset stance, those pucks will stick out. When this is set back as far as they spec it, what happens is that riser sometimes um, hits these pucks. So that's why I like to drill these pucks first because you can see where you're standing. Um, you don't want to drill these first and then say, hey, well, I, I don't really want to go further back on my board or, or further forward than I need to. I like to drill these and then at this point you can say, hey, you know, I'd like to go a little bit more forward just because what I see is when that binding slides onto those pucks. Not only do you have the pucks kind of sticking out, but your binding sticking out. You don't want that hitting your uh, climbing block on the back. What we do is we're gonna take these clamps back off. Uh, we can uh, we can tape the tape off. We don't need the tape anymore. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the inner portion of the uh, the board, the straight portion. You can kind of stack them. We have our uh, center point mark. What we're gonna do is uh, we can take a, uh, a pencil. You don't need to do this with a knife. Just kind of find that center portion. And uh, if you push kind of hard, it'll leave an indent, but it'll also uh, leave a good mark that you can, uh, you can clearly see um, in the right light. 